terrible. I ordered, don't ever get, when it says in the menu, stinky bean curd. It's, it's, really stinky, it's yeah. disgusting. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's like eating horse manure. And it smells like horse manure. But it, it did warn you, it said stinky. They, they warned me. <laughs> I, I believe that I have a useful job. The, the use of one man bands. I think the younger reporters have no idea who I am. I mean, you know, especially like when you have family or somebody right. waiting here, where do you find the cars? You know? My family always criticized me because I was lazy and I never finished anything that I started. I, when I looked at myself in the mirror, um, I didn't have to turn away. Well, when they start shooting, I'll take the microphone and you film this. And we had a whole plan, but once the shooting started, I just dove down onto the ground right into what we call a cow pie. How do you say cow pie in, 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 in Russian? And I was peeing in my pants the first time I did that. But once you do it once, then it's easier to do the second time. And you know, they remember the first time you kissed a girl, how scared you were? Okay, but it gets easier after a while. And so <laughs> it gives me a purpose for being there. I was the first reporter to walk into Afghanistan. And I had some really funny reports because I only made it 50 feet. Um, I did lots of reports in Russia during the time of perestroika. When the kid's crying, how long can you hold that shot and where are you going next? And that busyness also helps you get through this. It was an insane period in, in human history. Conditions have a chance of improving. They don't have any chance of improving if nobody knows about it. Like normal people, because I think they're real and, and sometimes movie stars um, have unusual personalities and they're not quite so real. Do you think that that has to do with the change in the appetite of U.S. viewers or something to do with the people that run the TV network? That anybody's ever done. This thing is an incredible empire. It's made billionaires out of all the executives and there's, there's, so many, there's a tennis channel now, a golf channel now, three soccer channels, and they've built this audience. And you can build an audience for this, you just have to stick with it and you have to uh, make interesting programs. That um, it's like feeding kids junk food and after a while they don't want to eat their vegetables anymore. We, we didn't have a lot of money and so we were, always, we were always looking for ways to do things differently and inexpensively. We're now standard deaf here instead of being high deaf. Um, we just don't have the money to do it right. Um, and I don't think we're going to get the money to, to, to change that. Uh, the nice thing about us is you don't need insurance and if you were renting commercially you'd have to spend a lot of money on insurance. They wouldn't be open on Saturdays and Sundays. So we've created this to be friendly to independent filmmakers. So I make, um, I make the same salary as a, as a starting teacher in New York City. But the budget is paying me like I'm an experienced director. And so this area is where DCTV can hire teachers to teach the high school students and get equipment for filmmakers to use. Um, and that's one of the ways that we've stayed alive as an organization. When they went to no, no, Nova, Nova Kuznet, I can't say it. And there were parts of this, this uh, ceremony that for a documentary filmmaker would, uh, were humiliating. We had a secret plan. You know, when you get old, you don't keep things in focus so easily. Um, I try not to stay any longer than I have to. And so in the, in the finale, they wheel themselves up onto the stage and sing and everybody dances and it has a much happier ending and a better arc than ours in which the parents fight and then the government crushes them.